Hello everybody and welcome to our class video about proofs with transversals. Our learning goal is that you'll be able to prove relationships between angles on transversals. Hey, imagine that. Okay, so as we take this next step into looking at geometry proofs, I'll be referring back to the postulates and theorems that we have back on our reference page. Okay, specifically this section right here. Okay, I've also copied and pasted that on the top of your notes, so you can refer to it. But we'll also use some of the other ones. Specifically in this video, we're going to be focusing on the ones that are on the left side. Okay, let's take a little closer look at those. Okay, so the first one, which is a postulate, is the corresponding angles postulate. As a postulate, it is taken to be true without proof based on observation. This is simply because corresponding angles are just a translation away from each other. You can easily see by sliding one angle down that it matches up with the other one. Okay, then all the other types of angle pairs are associated with the theorem. So they're proved based on the corresponding angle postulate. Okay, so we use that first corresponding angle postulate as a basis to prove that all the other ones are true. Let's look at individually what the corresponding angle postulate says. It says, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, okay, so we know that the lines are parallel that are being cut, then each pair of corresponding angles is congruent. That's the relationship we already looked at in class, but now we're going to look at this specific postulate that says it, which is this one. Then all the other theorems, alternate interior angles theorem, alternate exterior angle theorem, all that, says those same relationships. The fact that we know that each pair of alternate interior angles is congruent, or that each pair of alternate exterior angles is congruent, or that the same side interior angles are supplementary, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's see where these theorems originally came from. Okay, we're going to build it from the ground up, starting with the corresponding angles postulate. Okay, so using that, we'll prove that the alternate interior angle theorem is true. Okay, so let's look at what that says. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of alternate interior angles is congruent. Okay, so if I'm going to prove that this is true, it should come from the fact that the two lines are parallel. So we'll go ahead and say that line M is parallel to line N. This is my given because it's part of the if part of the statement. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of alternate interior angles should be congruent. Notice that that symbol there that I drew is means is parallel to the two lines going straight up and down. So that means M is parallel to N, by the way. And I also added the arrows to the diagram. Okay, so we need to prove that some alternate interior angles are congruent. I added some numbers here to the picture, angle 1 and angle 2. So if those lines are parallel, then we should be able to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Okay, so, let's go there. You guys probably know what the first statement would be. That would be the given information. So, given that M is parallel to N. Alright, so, hmm. The only thing I have to use as a basis for this proof is the corresponding angles postulate that says that if the p two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the corresponding angles are congruent. So I'll have to use that in order to prove this other theorem to be true. So I need to mark another angle that's corresponding to one of the two that I already have. So I'll put a 3 right there. That's corresponding with angle 1. So because of the corresponding angle postulate, I can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And there's the reason, corresponding angle postulate. Because those are corresponding angles, and the lines are parallel, then I know that 1 is congruent to 3. Okay, so now how can I get closer to showing that angle 1 
is congruent to angle 2. Hmm. Okay, well what do I know about angles 2 and 3? Those are vertical angles, are they not? So, I could say that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Now, I said because they're vertical angles, what do I put for the reason? If you look back at your reference page, that reason is the vertical angles theorem, which says that vertical angles are congruent. So, that will be my reason for saying that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Okay, so I've shown that 1 is congruent to 3, and angle 2 is congruent to 3. So if they're both the same as 3, aren't they both the same? So I'll say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Why is that? Well, if you notice what I did, I took the angle 3 that's in this relationship up here, and I replaced it with angle 2, which is the same. So what would I call that? Well, that's substitution. There. We showed that because the lines are parallel, I can use the fact the corresponding angles and vertical angles to show that the alternate interior angles are also congruent. Okay, so now we can build off of those two, the corresponding angles and the alternate interior angles, to show some of the other relationships. So let's now prove that same side interior angles are supplementary. That's the same side interior angle theorem. If you look below, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of consecutive, and that means the same as the same side, interior angles is supplementary. To build this proof, the given information needs to come from the if part. So that would be that M is parallel to N. Okay, so if those two lines are parallel, I should be able to prove that each pair of same side interior angles is supplementary. So I can pick out two of them here, angle 1 and 2, and the result of my proof will be that saying that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, just from the fact that M is parallel to N. Okay, you guys know what the, the first part is, that's the given. Okay, where do I go from here? Well, I'm going to prove that 1 and 2 are supplementary. That probably means I need to have some other relationship that is supplementary as well. So how about this one? If I put a 3 there, then I could say that angle 1 and angle 3 are a linear pair, and I know those are going to be supplementary. Okay, what's the reason for that statement? Well, they're a linear pair because they're next to each other and they form a straight line. That's the definition of a linear pair. That's what a linear pair is. So, definition of a linear pair. Okay, I need to get to the point where I say that they're supplementary, so I'll say that angle 1 and angle 3 are supplementary. You guys remember the reason for that? That's the supplement theorem. If two angles form a linear pair, which we already said that they do, then I know that they are supplementary. Hence the next statement. So my reason is that is the supplement theorem. Okay. Now, I need to get from here to showing that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, not just one angle 1 and angle 3. Hmm, how can I show that? Well, we have this handy-dandy theorem here that's back on your reference page that says the angles that are supplementary to the same angle or to congruent angles are themselves congruent. Okay, so... Hmm. Well, I do know that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, don't I? Since those are congruent, then 1 and 2 should also be supplementary. Why is it that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3? Well, because they're alternate interior. Because we just proved that theorem before, based off of the corresponding angle postulate, now, since it's been proved, we can use it in future proofs to f prove future theorems. Okay, we're pretending like this is how they're originally discovered. Okay, so because I have already used, I've already proved it, I can use it as a reason now. All right, so then 
now that I've said that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, because 2 and 3 are the same, and 1 and 3 are supplementary, that must mean that 1 and 2 are supplementary as well. The reason being this theorem that we have at the bottom. Okay? Because the angles that are supplementary to the same angle are congruent. Okay? So, or here, congruent angles, I should say. So, because there's not a name for that theorem, we'll just write it out. Notice I used a bunch of abbreviations. Angles supplementary to congruent angles are congruent. Okay? Okay, so let's keep going. Here's a final example. This one is not proving any specific theorem. It's just I want to use it to show you how we can prove other angle relationships. So we'll use all of the different angle theorems and postulates in this proof. Okay, we'll say that Here's the given information. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, and AB is parallel to YX. I can go ahead and mark that on the picture. Angle 1 congruent to angle 3, and I'll draw the arrows to show that they're parallel. Here's what a lot of you may be tempted to put for the second statement. Well, aren't 2 and 3 congruent just because they're alternate interior angles? But hold on. You can't say that. That's because the other lines are not given as parallel. Okay? The alternate interior angle theorem says that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, because these lines here are not sh given to us as parallel, even though they look parallel, we can't use them to say the alternate interior angles are congruent. My parallel lines are those. So, I can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because those are alternate interior angles. They are on lines we know are parallel. Then, after that, angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 because we can substitute. I could substitute angle 3 and angle 1. Okay. So, that's it for the proofs. We'll get to look at it a little bit more in class. All right, see you guys later.